Welcome to the PSRC's Regional Priority Ranking Training Webinar. Um, my name is Jean Kim. Um, I'm an Associate Planner with PSRC. We also have Kim Pearson, Gil Suris, and Monica Atkins from PSRC today. Um, I and Kim will give today's training, uh, but before we start the webinar, please make sure to enter your name and your organization name in the chat box as a record of att attendance. And um, please remember to keep your audio muted throughout the meeting. We also ask that um, everyone that use their video function to reduce any distraction. And if you're using a computer and a phone to connect to the meeting, please mute your computer audio to reduce any feedback. We welcome your feedback. Um, if you have a question or a comment, please use the chat feature to provide a comment or question to let us know you wish to speak. We will read your question or comment end of the presentation. And the presentation slides and recording of today's webinar will be uploaded on our website soon after the training. Okay, can you go to the next slide again? So today, um, we are going to review an uh, overview of the PSRC's role in WASHDOT consolidated grant process and review PSRC's regional priority ranking factors and schedule. And at the end of the webinar, we will have, we will receive the questions and answers. Next. So before I deep dive into the PSRC's process, I'd like to give you a brief overview on the WASHDOT's consolidated grant. So every two years, the Washington State Department of Transportation uses a consolidated process to fund eligible transportation projects, and they also assign the state's funds, federal funds, or both. The federal funds um, include Section 5310, Enhanced Mobility of Seniors and Individuals with Disabilities, Section 5311, Formula Grants for Rural Areas, Section 5339, bus and bus facilities infrastructure investment program. And state funds include rural mobility grant program, paratransit and special needs grant program. And purpose of this grant is to provide and improve um, transportation services for the people who are unable to purchase or um, provide transportation for themselves due to age, disability, income, or the geographic location where they live. And the eligible projects for um, this grant are operations, mobility management activities, um, capital projects, and planning projects. Eligible applicants um, are nonprofits, tribes, public transit agencies, local agencies, and government agencies. And when we say PSRC region throughout the training, it, in, it means King, Pierce, and Snohomish counties. Kitsap County is prioritized through Peninsula Regional Transportation Planning Organization. Next slide. Um, and I will review the PSRC's role in consolidated grant process. So PSRC recommends regional priority rankings for the state's consideration. So applicants who are seeking WASHDOT's funds in King, Pierce, or Snohomish counties must submit the same application to WASHDOT and PSRC. And for the 2021 to 2023 funding biennium, the PSRC region can distribute a total 10 ABC rankings, including two A rankings, three B rankings, and five C rankings that add points to an application. The region also has an unlimited number of D rankings 
which worth zero points for the state's scoring system that can also be submitted and allow a project to be considered for state funding. You can apply for either two-year or four-year, and the four-year projects will receive the same um, ABC ranking for both biennia. For example, uh, if a four-year project receives an A ranking in the first biennium, the project will automatically receive an A ranking again for the second biennium, which means um, the PSRC region will lose an A ranking for the second biennium's regional ranking process. And for more information, um, please visit the WASHDOT webpage, and you can see the link to the webpage on this slide. Next slide, please. And this chart shows uh, the PSRC regional priority ranking process. Um, the boxes in light green color represent WASHDOT's process, and teal color represents PSRC's process. So last month, WASHDOT announced funding opportunity and availability and um, the deadline for the grant application to WASHDOT and PSRC is October 30th. Once PSRC received um, the application, PSRC staff will review the application for assessment. And um, in January, um, Special Needs Transportation Committee will have a meeting to recommend the regional priority rankings for WASHDOT's evaluation. So once PSRC's executive board um, make final action on the regional rankings, we will send the rankings to WASHDOT and WASHDOT will evaluate the applications based on their um, evaluation criteria. And once the final scoring has taken place in the statewide competition, they will be looking to put together the best funding for projects out of the funding sources and amounts um, that are available. And when WASHDOT makes final decision on the award, um, we will work with WASHDOT to find the best projects. And once the WASHDOT announces the final award. Um, the awarded project will begin July 1st of next year. And for more information on the PSRC's regional ranking process, please visit um, the, regional, uh, the PSRC webpage with the link provided on this side, slide. Um, next slide. So again, the deadline for the application is October 30th. And please submit the same application to both WASHDOT and PSRC by emailing to myself, Jean Kim, at jkim at psrc.org. Next. Um, and WASHDOT has a new grant management system this time. Um, so Mariana Hannafeld with WASHDOT will give us a brief overview on how to export your applications in a PDF format to submit your applications to PSRC. Mariana, are you there? I am here. Can you hear me, everyone? Yes. Perfect. Thank you. Um, hi all. Uh, the I. Uh, we can't hear you, Mariana. Sorry about that, everyone. I'm back. Um, all right. 
So uh, I know that many of you have had a question about uh, the a process by which you make a PDF in order to send it to WashDOT. This is the new grants management system. And as you have gone, this is under the assumption that you have gone through the actual application and uh, you are at the application details uh, section. And so as you can see, there's a button here on the, um, on the far right hand side, it's the left button, but it's the right hand side, that says preview application. And I think we can go to the next slide. And um, on the next slide, you will see um, there's a print function and it says send to the printer. By the way, thanks to PSRC who um, <laughs> cleaned up my slides for me. <laughs> uh, and anyway, send to the printer. Very, very simple. This is very easy. All right. And the next slide will show you. Um, that it'll ask you uh, where you want it sent clearly. So this is on your own computer. You can see it says save as a PDF. That's what you want to do. Save it to your own computer. You're going to save it as a file. Um, and you can see on your left hand side of the uh, print screen there you can actually see the document itself. Make sure that you print all of the pages. Um, it'll have all of the information. And then the next slide as you save it. There you go. Uh, you can see it uh, where it's going to save to and then you would ob obviously put it in whatever file you need to on your own computer and you would press save and then you have the document itself in whatever file you want to put in, put it in on your own computer. I believe there's only four slides. I don't think there's anything more. Great. I think that's it. Any questions that I need to answer? One, one more. Don't forget to hit the print button. <laughs> yeah. Any questions? Um, I think we can. Um, yeah. Come so back I, to the slide if we have any questions at the end of the webinar. Yes. Thank you. Thanks, Mariana. Uh, yeah, again, um, the SNTC deliberation meeting will be held on January 20th of next year. And um, the Special Needs Transportation Committee will recommend the regional rankings for uh, PSRC board's final um, action. And we also encourage applicants to attend the meeting if possible. Next. Yeah, um, and when we assess, review and assess the applications, um, PSRC staff will use a set of regional priority ranking factors. Um, and these factors are designed to help implement PSRC's coordinated transit human services transportation plan, um, coordinated plan in short. So all the applicants who are participating in the PSRC's regional priority ranking process are expected to address both WASHDOT's evaluation criteria and our um, regional priority ranking factors within the same application. And um, here is the link to the latest coordinated plan, which was updated in 2018. So please make sure to review this plan before you fill out your application. And um, Kim Pearson will review um, the final regional priority ranking factors um, in the following slide. Kim. Hi, this is Kim Pearson. I'm an assistant planner at PSRC. And as Jean mentioned, I'll be going over the regional priority ranking factors and our overall process for reviewing applications in accordance with our factors. So um, we will review the applications um, and look at how they address each of the priority ranking factors. And once we've done that, we will share the results with the Special Needs Transportation Committee or SNTC for short. 
and interested parties a week prior to the deliberations on January 20th. Projects will receive a simple yes or no answer for each factor. A yes indicates that the project application does address the factor, and a no response indicates that a project application either does not address the factor or does not adequately address the factor. And um, at the link below, you can look at the regional party ranking materials online. So I'll go into um, an overview of what this looks like in the end. So once we've done the review, we will uh, list all the projects um, in order of the number of yeses they receive. And that's how PSRC um, provides the, the initial priority ranking. So projects with the most number of yeses per factor will tend to receive a higher ranking, so an A or a B. Um, and then uh, projects that receive the least number of yeses will receive a lower ranking. And so um, this process is to be able to arrange projects in comparison to each other. And then um, we send this initial ranking to the SNTC and they'll make their decision um, based on um, additional considerations that we've also included in our call for, for um, call for materials or call for projects materials, um, but they can adjust those additional considerations as well. And then once the SNTC has their, has made a decision regarding their rankings, that will be sent to the executive board for final action. So I'll go into each of the factors and um, how we assess each factor. So the first factor is project type, new versus existing. So in this factor, we ask basically whether the project is for, or the application is for a new project or an existing project. Um, the evaluation question we use is, is the application for preservation or to support ongoing operations of an existing program? And this includes fleet replace, replacement or other capital needs to support an existing program. So if the answer is yes, um, then this factor, um, this application will receive a yes for this factor. So only preservation and capital projects that are supporting existing programs will receive a yes. New or expansion projects will receive a no for this factor. So the next factor that we have is support for coordinated plan. And if, if you've applied before or in the last competition, for us this might sound a little familiar. Um, it is a combination of two factors that we had in the last competition. And so this factor basically asks um, about how your application or your project will support PSRC's coordinated plan. And the evaluation question we ask is, does the application support PSRC's coordinated plan by addressing at least one of the emerging needs and gaps and at least one high prioritized strategy? So the emerging needs and gaps and high prioritized strategies are written into the coordinated plan and we'll show a screenshot of um, those in some of the next slides. But the overall goal of this factor is that the application addresses at least one of each of these. So one of both. Um, and we have an example for information referral and assistance projects. Um, the first is, uh, so for information referral and assistance project in relation to emerging needs and gaps, it would address, um, it could address this one, which says that there is a need for more travel training and information referral and assistance and referral services for available mobili mobility options to close awareness gaps. It could also address um, this high, high prioritized strategy promote customer friendly travel training and information referral and assistance services to educate people with special transportation needs on available mobility options and how to use them to meet their mobility needs. 
So as long as your application addresses at least one um, emerging needs and gaps and at least one high prioritized strategy, it would receive a yes for this factor. And um, there is additional guidance on where you would answer each of these questions in our call for project materials, which we'll uh, link to at the end of this. Um, as mentioned, here is a screenshot of where the emerging or what the emerging needs and gaps are from our coordinated plan. And these emerging needs and gaps are located on page 31 to 32 or PDF pages 35 to 36 in the coordinated plan. And so you can identify which one, at least one um, of these that your project relates to and mention how your project supports or addresses uh, one of these needs and gaps in your application. And in terms of high prioritized strategies, um, this is a screenshot of those and they're located on page 43 or PDF page 47 in the coordinated plan. Next um, factor is uniqueness of service or program. And the overall purpose of this factor is to avoid unnecessary duplication of services. So our evaluation questions are, does the application provide information demonstrating that there are no other operating or mobility management programs serving the same populations within the same geographic area? So if your project is the only project operating um, or serving a particular population or populations within one particular geographic area, then um, you would state that in your application and you would receive a yes for this factor. However, if there are other operating or mobility management programs serving the same populations within the same geographic area, uh, we ask, does the application demonstrate the uniqueness of the project and how it meets needs that are not met by the other services in existence in the same geographic area? So, um, Basically, if you can demonstrate that you provide a different service or meet a unique need that other um, operating or mobility management programs do not meet, then you would receive a yes for this factor. So our evaluation method reiterates that um, as long as you explain the uniqueness of your services in relation to other existing services, if they exist um, for target populations, including public transportation services, um, for example, fixed route, demand response, etc., then you would receive a yes for this factor. Applicants that do not provide an explanation or respond that there is no similar services um, or programs without an explanation will receive a no. So uh, we would like you to be very um, explicit in whether there are other services, and if there are other services, um, is your pro project unique compared to those other services? And if you do not provide, um, provide an explanation, you would receive a no. The next factor is in relation to performance measures and targets. So the evaluation question asks, does the application commit to tracking required project-specific performance measures and set grant cycle-related targets based on whether applying for a two- or four-year grant for those performance measures? And the evaluation method says, if the applicant commits to tracking required performance measures and sets grant cycle-related targets for those required performance measures, the applicant will receive a yes for this factor. Applicants failing to address both required performance measures and targets will receive a no. So uh, what we mean by project-specific required performance measures is in relation to a performance measurement, 
process that we underwent earlier this year with the performance measures working group, a task force that we put together, um, basically to set performance measures for different special needs transportation programs in the region. And so we uh, basically came up with a list of performance measures that we would want to see applicants track um, and we would require them to track to receive a yes for this factor, as well as suggested performance measures or optional measures. And I will show those on the next slide. And then um, in terms of the grant cycle related targets, that is in relation to um, the funding period that you're applying for. So you would want to set targets or goals for the performance measures um, for a set amount of time, so either two years or four years. So for example, if you're applying for a two-year grant, you would say, I want to accomplish X, Y, Z by 2023. Or if it's for the four-year grant, it would be by 2025. So um, I'll go into an example of what this looks like. Two examples, actually. So for an operations project, um, there is one required performance measure. Um, and that is number of passenger trips. So uh, for this example, uh, there's an example target as well, which is 10,000, so 10,000 passenger trips achieved by end of 2021 to 2023 grant. So this is just an overall, this is basically an example of an overall goal or target you would hope to achieve. So the um, basically, the operations projects only have one required performance measure that we're looking at. For mobility management, and specifically if you're um, applying for a mobility coalition project, there are three required performance measures, and they are below. So the first is number of mobility coalition meetings, and so for example, you could say. Um, my target is 24 meetings, and if you're applying for four years, for example, you would say by the end of the 2021 to 2025 grant. And then the next one is number of mobility coalition meeting participants, excluding own staff. So for example, you could say 200 by the end of the same grant period. And then number of unique agencies represented at meetings, 25 by the end of the 2021 to 2025 grant. So the next slide <clears throat> shows the overall uh, table of our required performance measures and suggested performance measures by program and project type. Um, so you would identify the project type that most closely matches the project that you're applying for, or exactly matches, and then you would identify which performance measures are required for your project. And then if you wanted to, you could commit to tracking any of the suggested performance measures, but that's completely optional. And if you do not track those, that would have no impact on your, um, on whether you receive a yes or no. Um, and if, for some reason, for, say for example, you're um, a travel training, education, and orientation project, or applying for, for one, and you do not perform one of the um, activities that we have a performance measure for, then you would state so in your application. And as long as you explain, um, for example, that a performance measure does not apply to you because your uh, project does not perform that activity, then um, that would be sufficient for providing an explanation on this factor. Lastly, we have financial sustainability, as, um, our last priority ranking factor. The evaluation question we ask is, does the application demonstrate that it is providing more than the minimum required match from local sources in its project budget? So for this question, we'll be reviewing your project budget. And our evaluation method 
states that operating projects seeking federal and state funding um, have uh, basically at least a 50% local match. So you're seeking not more than 50% of your total project costs in uh, federal or state funding. Capital and mobility management projects seeking federal and state funding um, basically would want to show that they have a 20% local match. So that you're not seeking um, more than 80% in federal and state funding. And so as long as your project budget demonstrates that you have um, a 50% match for operating projects and a 20% local match for um, capital and mobility management projects, then you would receive a yes for this factor. So um, those are all of our factors. And on this page, we show um, basically on our web page where you would find our project management, um, or sorry, our call for projects materials. So you would go down the page and under call for projects materials at the second bullet where it says regional party ranking factors and additional considerations, you would find a document where we outline everything I just mentioned, as well as provide additional explanation on where in your application you would address each of these factors. So it's a very useful document and um, we, we hope that you'll be able to um, use it for guidance and of course if you have any additional questions you can um, reach out to us as well. So I'll turn it back to Jean for uh, the, the, the overall schedule. Um, yeah, and um, the factors um, guidance that Kim mentioned um, will also include the additional considerations that we used um, in the past competition, and um, those are the additional factors that reinforce the regional priorities that the SNTC will use for their deliberation meeting for the regional priority ranking recommendation process. So um, here we have the schedule of the detailed consolidated grant um, priority ranking process. And the application is due for October 30th. Um, the applicants must submit the same applications to both WashDOT and PSRC by emailing their PDF application to Gene Kim myself. And we will only review the applications that are submitted by October 30th deadline. And one week prior to the January 20th SNTC um, deliberation meeting, PSRC will send out uh, the materials for the deliberation, including the spreadsheet um, that Kimberly shared as an example. And on January 20th, um, the SNTC committee will recommend the original parity ranking based on PSRC staff assessment of the applications. And on February 25th, um, PSRC executive board will make final decision on the original parity rankings. So that's the final slides of today's training webinar. And we welcome the questions at this point. I know Gil has been um, answering to the questions in a chat box during the meeting. And for those of you who don't have a uh, screen to read our answers on the questions, they can read out loud. So we had a question from Jerry. Um, she asked, are the number of rankings what is left for the 2021 to 2023 biennial after taking out the ones that were for for your projects last time? Um, and the answer is um, we have 10 total of 10 ABC rankings that um, I shared on my slides: um, two A's, three B's, 
and five C's, an unlimited number of D's. Um, so that was on my slide. And again, the slides and the video recording uh, will be available after this meeting on our website. And we also had a question from Hall. Um, what covers the Olympic Peninsula? Um, the Olympic Peninsula will be covered by Peninsula Regional Transportation Planning Organization for regional priority rankings. Thank you for the question. And Stacy asked if we know any, how many A's, B's, and C rankings we definitely have available for the 2023 to 2025 biennium um, once the current four-year projects reapply. And our answer is um, we'll be working with WashDOT between competitions on regional rankings for the next um, biennium. If we have any other questions, yes. Um, thank you, Nancy. Um, how do I access the application online? Um, your application uh, will be available is available on WashDOT's grant management system. Is this true, Mariana? We have Mariana Hannafeld and Monica Gosh with WashDOT joining today. So. Um... So I'm sorry, you're looking for the for access to the grants management system or the consolidated grant application? Nancy, can you unmute yourself and clarify your question? Um, it's the consolidated grant application for operating grants. Okay. So um, I'll put the um, I'll put the uh, link in the chat so that you have it. Okay. Oh, great! That would be great. Yeah, no problem. Thank you, Mariana. Of course. <laughs> and the second question is, how do I get the ranking factors for the Peninsula RTPO? Um, I think you should reach out to um, the Peninsula RTPO staff for um, their ranking factors. Um, so thank you for your questions, Nancy. How would I, how do I get to the Peninsula RTPO staff? This is Gil Sarisa from PSRC. Maybe, uh, Mariana, if you wouldn't mind putting the uh, contact for uh, the Peninsula RTPO folks, or if there's like a watch.ly is on in the chat, that would be great as well. Oh, Looks like we got some people in that better region. I, I can absolutely do that. Thank you. Thank you. And do you have any other questions? Hi, Jean. This is Gil uh, from PSRC. Maybe you just, uh, we were, uh, Stacy and I were kind of going back and forth on the regional priority rankings for the next uh, biennium. And I guess maybe just part of the, part of the response there is that we, I think there was a commitment on WashDOT's part to uh, revisit the four year, two year, uh, process after after a little bit of time, so I didn't want to say particularly exactly how many we're going to receive. Um, you know, we're going. I'm hoping that WashDOT will facilitate another GPAC process between now and the next biennium. Uh, but I think just conceptually, we had 21 rankings for the last for the competition two years ago, and I think you said 10 rankings are available now. Those rankings are from projects that were either not funded at all. Or, uh, or they don't want to receive two years of funding. We did, we did use all of our rankings, our A, Bs, and Cs, and in fact, funded a D project in that last time. So um, that's kind of, I guess, maybe conceptually what it is. We have the 10 of the 21 rankings available now, and I assume that we'll at least have 11 rankings available in the next, um, the next two years, at least. Yes, thank you for the clarification, Gil. And any more questions? This is Gil. One, one more thing. I just wanted to kind of note, uh, I and mean, I think uh, you guys did a really good job, Gene and Kim, about sharing this. Uh, just to note that the the priority rankings, we, we were hoping there'd be more questions on the um, on the factors that we're evaluating from the uh, applications. 
And so on slide 15, there was a, a great uh, illustration of how that's going to happen. That, that slide is just showing the beginning of the process. It really is the work of our committees and boards to make the actual decision. Those, uh, uh, those factors are really just the starting point for that discussion. So I think on that slide that showed like a potential array of A's, B's, and C's, that's just the starting point of the discussion. And the, and the, and the, the committee can actually decide not even to do it that way. So, so basically, uh, it should really just show the, the number of yeses for the uh, A's, B's, uh, the, the number of yeses by the projects. And, and that's the initial way of, of, of showing the, rank, the projects to the, the committee. And, and since we have WashDOT staff join today, um, Mariana or Monica, um, can one of you give us um, an overview or um, high levels uh, in, and any information on the WashDOT's training? So the training for the consolidated grant um, that is um, online um, will is actually in the process of being uh, recorded. I will tell you, however, the State Transportation Conference is next Monday and Tuesday, and uh, the training for the consolidated grant uh, in terms of how to actually go through the application on in the grants management system uh, will be, it's actually first up on Monday morning at about eight o'clock. Um, I really recommend to all of the uh, folks here in PSRC to sign up for the virtual conference, the State Transportation Conference. It's only $75. It will help you um, if you can't do that, if you're unable to do that. Oh, and it's all virtual, obviously. So only $75, all virtual. Registration is still open. And um, uh, I think you will find that all of the training for the grant the consolidated grant process will be there at the conference. It will be then subsequently uh, put online and be available to you. The way it's been done in the past is the training modules for the consolidated grant process. We do it in sections and uh, they are uploaded to YouTube um, and you can access them in that way. So that information will be coming out very soon uh, within the next week. Uh, so uh, I think that will help. I will try and um, send you the link for the State Transportation Conference as well in the chat. Thank you, Mariana. And we got one more question from Mona. Um, can any of the 10 ABC rankings for this year eligible for four years? And um, yes. Um, the projects can apply for either two year or four year for this biennium as well. And for additional information or any questions um, regarding the original priority ranking pr process, um, please contact myself, Jean Kim, um, at jkim at psrc.org. So if we don't see any other questions. I think we can end the training. Oh, Stacy raised her hand. Stacy? Sorry, just ahead. if you saw my comment about the vacancies. Oh. Thanks. Oh, yeah. Uh, sorry, I, I missed your <laughs> question. Um, so are there any member alternate vacancies that need to be filled for the SNTC in preparation for voting at the January meeting? Yeah, um, we can share uh, the current membership um, table with uh, the county mobility managers to make sure that we have uh, the voting members um, in place before the January deliberation meeting. Thanks, I see. Yeah. Well, thank you for joining us today. Um, for any questions, um, please feel free to reach out to myself, Jean Kim, 
Um, and please make sure to visit our website for um, the Culver Project materials as well. Thank you.